Hello and welcome to the Daily News Simplified, an answer to what, why and how of newspaper reading. Today, we are going to analyze various important news from the Delhi edition of the Hindu newspaper dated 14 June 2019. The news to be covered are given on the screen and corresponding timestamps can be found in the description as well as comment section below. Now, let us begin with our today's discussion. So here we have a news item appearing on page number 22 titled in Arunachal Pradesh, the Asiatic golden cat wears new colors. So this topic is important from your prelims exam under environmental ecology, biodiversity. We have also seen questions appearing on such topics in previous year prelims examinations. This question on ghadiyals and their natural habitat was asked in the year 2017 Moreover, there was this question on endangered species asked in the year 2012 prelims examination. Now, let us understand various dimensions associated with this news item. The news item talks about the discovery of six color morphs of Asiatic golden cat. Now, let us first talk about Asiatic golden cat. Its scientific name is Catopuma Teminsky. It is found across eastern Nepal northeastern India, basically Arunachal Pradesh and beyond up to Indonesia. It has been listed in the red list prepared by International Union for Conservation of Nature that is IUCN under the category near threatened. Moreover, it has also been included under Schedule 1 of Indian Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Now let's shift our focus to the basic context of the news that is the color morphs that have been discovered. Before that, let's have a look what exactly is a color morph. It basically refers to the occurrence of two or more discrete color forms of an animal within a population. Here you have on screen various color morphs which have been discovered in the region. Now, what is so remarkable about this discovery is that no place on the earth has so many colors of wild cats of same species. Now let us solve this previous year prelims questions. The first question is, if you want to see ghadiyals in their natural habitat, which one of the following is the best place to visit? Now first of all you need to understand, ghadiyal is a fresh water crocodile and it is found in its natural habitat in the Chambal river which flows through Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. Here we have the next question, which one of the following groups of animals belong to the category of endangered species? So now here the correct answer is A, that is Great Indian Bustard, Musk Deer, Red Panda and Asiatic Wild Ass. These species have been classified under the Endangered Species category by IOCN. Here we have an article appearing on page number 1 titled India will have its own space station. This topic is important for your prelims examination under general sciences as well as your mains examination under GS paper 3 relating to science and technology as well as achievements of Indian in science and technology. Let's first try to understand what a space station is. It is a large spacecraft that remains in low earth orbit for an extended period of time. In other words, it is basically a laboratory in space which allows astronaut to come, stay for weeks or even months and carry out various experiments over there. Presently, there is only one such space station which is International Space Station. It is in space since 1998. Talking about low earth orbit, it is basically an orbit with an altitude of 2000 km or less. Most of the man-made objects in space are present in low earth orbit. Talking about Indian Space Station, it would be launched only after the successful launch of Gaganyaan, which is first human spaceflight mission planned by ISRO to be launched in 2022. In this way, the space station would be launched somewhere around 2027 to 2029. Now let us focus on various salient features of Indian Space Station. Firstly, it would be used to carry various microgravity experiments. Now, what is microgravity? It is a situation when the force of gravity is very very weak. It is basically used to study the impact of low gravity on human body. 
that is astronauts who work there in such conditions secondly indian space station will be placed in low earth orbit that is less than 2000 kilometers in this case it would be around 400 kilometers above the surface of earth now let us try to understand why this program is being designed firstly the international space station is expected to retire by 2024 and would eventually be decommissioned by 2030 moreover there is a high chance post 2024 it would be china's tiangong which would be the only crewed space station in the space there has also been a pact between china and pakistan to fly a pakistani astronaut on board so even strategically speaking indian space station becomes very important here's a news item appearing on page number 13 which reads center reduce contribution rate for esi the news item is important for your preliminary examination under economic and social development now let us start with the basic context of the news item it basically talks about the decision of the government to reduce the contribution of employees as well as employers under employee state insurance scheme these reduced rates will come into effect from 1st july 2019 this scheme which is being administered by employees state insurance corporation is a multi-dimensional social security scheme it provides socio-economic protection to the employees in organized sector against various events such as sickness, maternity, disablement and death due to employment injury. Moreover, it also provides for medical care to insured employees as well as their families. Talking of ESIC, it is a statutory corporate body under the supervision of Ministry of Labor and Employment. Coming back to Employee State Insurance Scheme, it is a self-financing scheme. So here the contribution is done by employees as well as employer which is based on fixed percentage of the wages paid. Moreover, it extends to all factories employing more than 10 employees as well as it covers all employees with the wages up to 21,000 rupee. I have already discussed that the scheme is financed by contribution by employers and employee. At the same time, the news item talks about reduction in this contribution. So now we would focus on the quantum of this reduction. As you can see in this table, earlier the total contribution made was 6.5% of the wages, which has now been reduced to 4% of the wages. Now let us see the breakup. Earlier, where employer contribution was 4.75% and employees contribution was 1.75%. This has now been reduced to 3.25% and 0.75% respectively. This is a welcome step because it has got a lot of benefits associated. Where on one hand, the financial burden on the workers reduces. Similarly, on the other hand, employers will benefit with the reduced financial liability on their establishments. Moreover, this would also bring a lot of new workers under this scheme. Hence, this is a masterstroke by the government which would strengthen the social security net in our country and help millions of workers. Here we have a news item appearing on page number 14 which says two tankers attacked in Gulf of Oman. So now this news item is important from your preliminary exam point of view under current events of national and international importance as well as your mains GS paper 2 under international relations. As you all must be aware, USA recently pulled out of Iranian nuclear deal which led to escalation of tensions between USA and Iran which further led to geopolitical tensions which took place in West Asia as well as a concern over increase in international crude oil prices. Recent attack on two tankers near Gulf of Oman in Strait of Hormuz area has further added fuel to the fire. So in this video analysis we would be focusing on Strait of Hormuz and various dimensions associated with it as well as various geopolitical implications associated with this issue. Now let's talk about Strait of Hormuz. Firstly, let's try to understand what exactly a strait is. It is a narrow passage of water connecting two seas or two other large water bodies. In the case of Strait of Hormuz, 
Persian Gulf is connected with Gulf of Oman. Moreover, it lies between Oman and Iran. At its narrowest point, it is just 33 kilometers wide. Considering the fact that recently there was a question on Strait of Malacca in preliminary examination, hence Strait of Hormuz becomes important for examination from that point of view. Having talked about its location, now we shall be focusing on importance associated with the strait. It is through Hormuz Strait that one-fifth of the world oil passes which amounts to 20%. All major oil economies of Middle East which include Saudi Arabia, Iran, UAE, Kuwait and Iraq export most of their crude oil via the strait. Not only crude oil but Qatar which is world's largest liquefied natural gas exporter also sends almost all its LNG through the strait. Last but not the least, it is US Navy's fleet which is tasked with protecting the commercial shipping area of the strait. So the significance is not only economic but also geopolitical. So the entire situation which is unfolding here has a lot of geopolitical implications associated. So now we shall see these geopolitical implications one by one. Firstly, there is the issue of bilateral conflicts. So now, we don't have bilateral conflicts just between Iran and USA. It is also between Iran and Saudi Arabia. It was last year near Gulf of Aden in Bab El Mandeb Strait that a Saudi oil tanker was attacked by Houthis. So now Houthis are a group which is supported by Iran and it is from Yemen. This is the type of proxy war fought in the region. It is because of such incidents this proxy war can take an ugly shape. Secondly, there is a problem of nuclear proliferation in the region. In 2015 there was a framework which was reached by USA and various world power with Iran. Now since USA has pulled out of that framework which was signed in 2015, there is a high probability that Iran may resort to other means in order to fulfill its nuclear ambitions. And this is also a main bone of contention which is there in the region. Now, all these factors will combine to impact global oil supply balance. The Strait of Hormuz is the main sea line of communication of the region and as we have already seen, a lot of oil is passing through the strait. So in case of such situations, we will see a big fluctuation in the oil prices because of the impact on its movement through the region. Hence, the geopolitical implications associated with the issue are massive and they can't really be ignored. Considering all the circumstances and issues associated with the issue, all we can say is global peace and freedom of navigation and trade are most important things and should not be disturbed at any cost. In order to achieve this, various stakeholders involved in the situation need to come together and evolve a consensus in order to solve the problem which is at hand. So here we have a news item which appears on page number 15 titled Try Ask to Revisit Spectrum Auction Recommendations. So now this topic comes under your preliminary examination, current events of national and international importance. Firstly, let us try to understand the basic context of the news item. It is regarding TRI, that is Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, which is the regulator of telecommunication in India. It came up with various recommendations for the auctioning of 5G spectrum in India. Now, these recommendations raised various concerns such as high price of 5G spectrum in India. Regarding this, DCC, that is Digital Communications Commission asked TRI to reconsider its recommendations which were to lead to high price of 5G spectrum. Now we shall try to deal with Digital Communications Commission in context of your prelims examination. The Digital Communications Commission which was earlier known as Telecom Commission was renamed by National Digital Communication Policy of 2018. The secretary to the government of India in Department of Telecommunication 
is its ex officio chairman and digital communication commission is responsible for following firstly it is related to the formulation of the policy of the telecommunication in india secondly it also prepares the budget for the department of telecommunication for each financial year and thirdly it is also responsible for the implementation of government policy in the matter concerning telecommunication now we shall also be taking up usof that is universal service obligation fund which is a topic related to telecommunication in india it was established with an idea of providing basic telegraph services to the people in rural and remote areas at affordable prices it was given statutory backing by indian telegraph act of 2003 now coming to the funding part it is funded by universal access levy which is charged from telecom operator and form a part of their revenues secondly it is a non lapsable fund and if unspent it is accrued for the next year thirdly the proceeds from universal access levy is credited into the consolidated fund of india and prior parliamentary approval is needed for the utilization of this fund so here we have an article appearing on page number 10 titled faint glimmer this is important from your preliminary exam point of view under economic and social development it basically discuss data related to consumer price index as well as index of industrial production so various aspects which have been discussed here were discussed in the dns dated 13 june 2019 that is yesterday and you can refer to this in order to understand various aspects based on our today's discussion here you have four questions which are for practice now we shall be discussing their answer after a pause of 5 seconds so now the first question here is indian space station will be placed in low earth orbit which of the following is or are characteristic features of that orbit so now the first statement reads low earth orbit satellites typically operate in polar orbits second is low earth orbit is used for mobile services third is low earth orbit is used for dth television so now this statement is wrong as dth is operated by geosynchronous orbits so now the right answer is 1 and 2 only that is a the next question is which of the following water bodies are joined by strait of hormuz so here the right answer is a that is persian gulf and gulf of oman third question reads consider the following statements related to universal service obligation fund so now here the first statement is it enjoys statutory status under indian telegraph act of 2003 which is right second is it is a lapsable fund which is wrong because it never lapses hence the answer is one only last question here is consider the following statements related to employee state insurance scheme that is esic the first statement reads the scheme is jointly financed by government and the employers which is wrong as we have already analyzed the scheme is financed by employers and employees the next statement reads the scheme is applicable to all factories employing more than 100 persons which is again wrong it is applicable to all employing more than 10 persons hence the answer is d that is neither one nor two with this we end our today's discussion now let's move to the question for the day